tonight on Bondi Rescue. Actually, go. Go. Lifeguards scramble to backpacker's rib. Mate, he's going under. A predator visits Bondi. There's a bit of shark out there, just had a go at a bloke. Really? Agony in the tower. <laughs> and surfing the Irish way. I suppose I am a natural, yeah? It's another day in the great Australian melting pot. A day where everyone is welcome. But something says this day is a little different. <laughs> On Australia Day, the nation celebrates... ..and the world joins in. This is so well. It's a great lifestyle over here. We're having an absolute ball. So we've got to say thank you very much. What yeah. better way to do that than... Thank you, Australia. Happy Australia Day. Uh, Australia, be welcoming. Yeah, black, red, skinny. Yellow, blue, green, everyone is welcome to come to Australia. Happy Australia Day! We're from Los Angeles, California. Um, we're a bunch of college students just uh, studying abroad. We'll be leaving in a couple of days and we're just enjoying Australia Day. Love, I love this place, I don't want to leave, but I have to go back home. Yes, you guys are from England? Yeah, no. Wales! Wales! Oh, my God. That's terrible, I'm sorry. Is that offensive to say Mine, that? Mine, hen laughing. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Happy Australia Day! This is my idea of Australia. The beach, beach culture, beach lifestyle. That's my Australia. Um, so, yeah, if, if I wasn't working, I'd be down here anyway. Happy Australia Day! You know, I'm thinking maybe 20, 30,000, hopefully by this afternoon. And, um, yeah, we... You get all kinds of people coming down today, you know, a lot of, lot of tourists, a lot of families early. And, um, yeah, I wish I wasn't working, actually. <laughs> Beautiful day, isn't it? Very busy, later. Do you reckon? I don't know. What do you reckon? It hasn't really been that ribby. We might be lucky then. You just made her year. Yeah, you too. My Australia list. What are you doing today? Having some prawns and oysters and a bit yes. of a barbecue yeah. in Australia? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Can't think of a better place to be. Yeah, I'm real. What's going on? Oh, no place. Like first Australia Day, mate. Very good. Yeah. Very impressive. Hey, buddy. How's he enjoying it so far? Look at him. He's living the dream. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> today, the water has been invaded, not by dreaded blue bottles, but by some very Australian footwear. A shoe company is attempting a curious world record, 863 inflatable thongs in a single line. Oh, what they do, they've hired us to um, go out and do the water safety because you don't know who's getting on the blow-up uh, thongs. A lot of people just jump on and may not be able to swim too well. It's soon clear thongs are made for feet, not for surfing. But while there's fun and games at the north end, lifeguards are on edge down south. We're gonna, we've come off a very big high tide and we've got an extremely low tide this over. It's changing right now. And what was a safe zone for swimming out in front is now becoming uh, a little bit tricky. It's starting to run and there's a series of holes and gutters on the way out to that outside bank. Kyle is on exchange all the way from Hawaii. He's about to experience one of the busiest days of the year. You guys all right? He warns swimmers of the hazardous conditions. The current's going to start getting stronger now. The tide's going out. So, uh, go back in. I don't want to take any chances. I mean, if it looks like a, a rescue, most of the times it really is. So, I mean, I might as well just have at least a go at it. I mean, if, if I jump in and they're all right, I mean, it's better than me not jumping them and, and not being all right, so. All right? Good, dude. Okay. Kyle is unaccustomed yeah, to the sheer numbers of in. poor swimmers. Oh yeah, there's guys doing the backstroke, they're doing the doggy paddle, they're doing the I'm on the board, lose the board, I think it'll be easier. None of them work. Inexperienced swimmers often seek the security of a boogie board, but they are not a life-saving device. 
Blake spots a boogie boarder who's fallen off his board and is struggling. He gets hammered going out and loses his sunglasses. Just in that rip down in front of us, it's just getting them really quickly. That's why we're right on there, pretty much. The boogie boarder is either relieved or very excited. But a new danger looms behind them. Then Kyle spots yet another boogie boarder in trouble. It looks like they're trying to help him in, so yeah, go for a battle. 10 4. 10 4. Come on the board, I'll take you in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Get on the board and lie down right here. The man has been dragged out in the rip and then fallen off his board. He can't swim. Kyle's Hawaiian surfing skills come to the fore. He understood that he couldn't get back in the shore, but he didn't know why. And with a little bit of waves and the onshore winds, just a lot of water's moving around out there. I mean, those guys are going on the boogie board, no fins, and they don't even know how to use the board anyway, so that's when we come in. As the rip pulls harder with the outgoing tide, more swimmers struggle. For people who don't know, there's a dangerous current right in front of where you're swimming. Everyone that's swimming comes back to shore. There's no swimming in this area. The swimmers make slow progress. Out past the surf zone, one man has a long way to go. Look at him, look at him trying to swim. He can't swim. The swimmer can barely lift his arms and begins dog paddling. Yeah, Bondo, Central. Yeah. Mate, he's going under. A man dog paddling against Backpacker's Rip is exhausted. Before lifeguards can get to him, he's helped by the Bondi Rescue cameraman. Right? Kyle races in without a rescue board, while Blake provides backup. Kyle! Oh. Just got him. Kyle assists the exhausted man to shore. He's safe. Then, moments later, another swimmer is in trouble. Right, there's one right, right in front of you, mate. He's going under. It's only midday, and already Blake is on his eighth rescue. <laughs> the man is fully clothed, a recipe for disaster. Originally from Pakistan, Shazar now lives in Australia. He observes his Muslim faith by covering up when swimming. For men, it's different. Uh, we just, uh, from navel to our knees, we cover that. So for women, it's all. You should, you should uh, cover that. So it's because of that. Meanwhile, Australia Day celebrations continue in their many forms. Some wipe out on the sand, while others wipe out in the water. Italian surfer Franco is the latest tourist to come to grief. With a badly dislocated shoulder, he needs urgent pain relief. Azza offers him the green whistle. Suck on that. Won't taste real good at the start, but... Dislocations are notoriously painful, but a common injury at Bondi. Yeah, we get plenty of these through the year. Just when you dive forward, that action, you know, it sort of hyperextends the arm and pops out pretty easy. Franco's mate has just received word his friend is injured. Uh, he's all right. Perhaps he needs the green whistle himself. So our ambulance coming? Yeah, it's on its way. Meanwhile, yet another tourist has encountered the dangers of an Australian beach. Just take your hand away and give it a little. It is cut. Let me just put some gloves on and I'll use a bit of a cleaner. What happened? Your board hit you in the nose? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ryan out of Bondi Central. I just had my eyes off the water. I've got a first aid down here. Does it hurt a lot? Uh, it's not too bad, but I think it might just be the shock. Yeah. It's given you a pretty decent whack. Yeah, it did. But, uh, it didn't knock you out at all? Yeah. No. Yeah, ah. Franco was planning a cruise on Sydney Harbour later in the day. Oh. Instead, Australia Day will be spent in hospital putting his shoulder back where it belongs. Ah, ah. 
Back at the south end, the rescue tally is now at 20. Despite so many rescues, swimmers are still pouring into the water. Yeah, it's getting worse. The boys are pulling them in pretty consistently now. There's two or three in trouble at the moment. Um, it'll keep us busy all afternoon. Kyle is back out, helping two friends who drifted out of their depth. One can't swim at all. Get on the board. Get on. Oh, thanks, bro. Jump on, lay down. Lay down, stomach for her. What about, can you swim? Uh, sure. Okay. Uh, turn around, turn around the other way. Uh, turn around the other way. Then behind him, Kyle hears a voice. Up, up, up. Yeah, big problem, Doc. Yet another person is in trouble on a boogie board, but Kyle has no more room to help him. There's another guy behind, behind him holding on, and Kyle's calling out for assistance, so Blake's on his way out. What a team, eh? Look at this. Looks like the odd couple, Kyle and Blake, both going in for a team rescue. Blake collects the man just as a wave looms up. He manages to stay upright, but the landing isn't quite as elegant. Meanwhile, Sonny, the man Kyle rescued, is back on shore with his friend. You don't really think about what would happen, you know, you're just, uh, just, just stuck in the moment, you know, you're like, oh, how do I get out of this? I couldn't, you couldn't think, you're just, just how do I get out of this water? Everything, it's just, yeah, it's just too much going through you. Like, what kind of stuff? Panic. Yeah, just panic, absolute panic, yeah. Kyle has done more rescues in the last hour than he'd normally do in a week back on Hawaii's North Shore. I don't know, these people just keep jumping in and they see us rescuing people and, I mean, I don't know how they know, they'll realise what's going on. I mean, you jump in and you ask, can you swim? And they're all, no, like, what are you doing in the water? So, I don't know. Yeah, as well, those two are right in front of you, mate. They look like they're in trouble. I think you have to go for them. Yeah, going in. Then another group floundering near the shore. The other one in front's not too good. The second one's are worse. As a heads out to one man. All right, buddy. Just grab on. You all right? Yeah. It's going to keep pulling you, all right? Yeah. You want to just jump on, I'll take you in. As his man is safe, but three of his mates are panicking as they drift out of their depth. Yeah. Yeah. Tom can't rescue three men at once. Go back. Mate, you got to go. Are you got? Actually, go. Go. Maxie and Kyle race to help Tom, who's having trouble rescuing three struggling swimmers. Go back. Go back. Go back. Terry joins in. He paddles past Tom, who's now in the water holding up the two men he couldn't reach, while his third patient clings to the rescue board. Right, Terry. No, no, just stay on, stay on. Oh, they're all going to get pumped by his waves now. Kyle joins what's become a mass rescue. There's chaos, with five lifeguards in the water and ten panicked swimmers. Yeah, good job. Kyle arrives just as Tom capsizes with two patients on his board. Within 30 seconds, the whole group went in and um, we had a 10 person mass rescue. So, it'll be a bit of fun for the day. Yeah, Corey and I just sitting and we see it unfolding, unfolding, and by the time the boys were all just at the bolt, they come from everywhere. So. Oh, that was a mass rescue right there, and it happened in seconds. Everybody just went all of a sudden. We go. That was fast. Yeah. The group are holidaying from Korea. It's an Australia Day Tazi and his friends won't forget. How are you, buddy? You okay? Yeah, no, he's very, very okay. So yeah. Thank you for saving me. It was very dangerous because there was a lot of you and there was only one of me. Yeah. And I had to rescue you and then I had to leave you and swim over to your friends and try and hold them up. Yeah, yeah. But when you come down here, you got to be careful of the conditions because it's really dangerous. Yeah. You always have to swim between the red and yellow flags. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, it's a very, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Yeah, but it's now it's uh, very, yeah. very good. Yeah. You'll know better for next time. Yeah, thank you. For no worries, job. buddy. Yeah, thank you. No worries, happy Australia Day. Yeah, thank you. See you, mate. Well, they said it comes in threes. That's two big ones. There's one more bound to happen. 
two more hours left to work. At the north end, Bondi locals have gathered for some time-honoured traditions. Since we were kids, you know, our parents used to bring us down here every Australia Day, so it's, it's a tradition that we're trying to maintain. And our kids are coming down here and stuff now, so basically we just come down, sit the barbies up, have, have a couple of beers and enjoy ourselves. But Big Tom is the, uh, the, the host of the great get-together today, the Australia Day get-together, one of Bondi's finest. But not everyone's on their finest behaviour. At the south end, things have calmed down, but lifeguards aren't taking any chances. Mate, you're in a nasty Guys, please come back to shore. One swimmer is going nowhere fast. Bainey scoops him up and drags him in behind the jet ski. He's safe, but for some reason, the man seems shy about emerging from the water. The jet ski ride ripped his swimmers off. Now, with hundreds watching on, the man must perform a discreet and difficult task. As the shadows lengthen, the excitement of Australia Day subsides. Ready? Lifeguards are just an hour from knockoff time, but then a very Australian drama. A shark is reported harassing surfers. Look at the shark out there, just had a go at a bloke. Really? Looks like that. Whereabouts? It could have been a dolphin playing, but it just kind of didn't look like a dolphin. It kind of moved a little bit quicker. Yeah. We all saw it and everybody went. Coming in. It's, it looked like he had a go at a surf. No, it was about another bloke out in the back there. And yeah. It looked like it had a go at him. It kind of sort of went at him and then moved away again when he was on the way. Did he, uh, did he see it? Yeah, yeah, he cut in with me. Where's he? As some evacuate the water, the sighting is confirmed by other surfers. It would have probably been about as long as a board chasing fish under the water down out there. Then it's confirmed again. straight away. It's still out there. Why are you coming and all of a sudden just turned off? Well, we're going to take it seriously. We, we sort yeah. of have to. There's about three or four surfers. They, they said it's, they're not 100% sure. They said it could have been a dolphin, but it was really big and it swam underwater straight at them and then they all hit the water or something and swam off in the other direction. Are they all friends or are they just separate guys? They know each other? No, no, they don't know each other. Mm, that's a bad sign. A shark has been reported harassing surfers at South Bondi, but sounding the shark alarm is a major decision. With four independent witnesses, Hoppo decides it's no joke. But should he panic thousands of swimmers or risk a shark attack itself? Surely fall forward. Yeah, that's right. They knew it could be a gag, but they don't know each other. get four around of people. Oh, Cole, just put it off. Give Cole a go. Why don't you hit it one time and let it go? Kyle does the honours. Upper bottom. Oh, there's only a bottom one, huh? Just attention, everyone out in the water. We just had a shark sighting. We sounded the shark alarm. If everyone would just like to make their way back to shore, just until we clear the area and make sure it's safe to swim. The shark net across Bondi only provides a deterrence. Shark sightings inside the net are not uncommon. Quiggers and Chapo head out to warn surfers who've either ignored the shark alarm or don't know what it means.
guys that they are always here and most of the times you don't know, but they actually are very close. Do you hear the alarm when we screamed out, shark, shark? Yeah, majority of the time the sharks will swim through and uh, you may not even see them half the time, you know, but there might be one hanging around. There's a lot of fish around at the moment, so you never know. There could be one just hanging around feeding this time of the night. We'll um, do a search for uh, probably 15 minutes. They'll, they'll go up and down just to check it out. And once it's all clear, we don't see anything, we'll let the, pretty much everyone get back in the water again. If lifeguards find the shark, they'll use the jet ski to try to chase it out to sea. Uh, I didn't see anything. Plenty of fish. It doesn't deter the surfers, as you can tell. They just want to know how big it is. Anything over 10 foot, they might get out. But uh, yeah, I think we can probably give the all clear. The all clear is signalled and the lure of the surf becomes irresistible. This is all we needed to end this crazy weekend, a shark sight. Just as the shark menace dwindles, Brazilian surfer Icarus comes to the tower with startling evidence. And that's when I fell and uh, swam towards the board and the piece of my board was missing. I was kind of like, what happened? Did I hit the sand bank or not? I wasn't sure what really happened, so I was looking for the rest of the piece. Couldn't find it, swim out. One of the boys saw me and said, that's a bite. Well, see, look, if you look there, straight down, there looks like straight teeth. Yeah. Pretty, pretty you know, an unusual thing that happens. Reckon that's not going to happen to me again in my life, so might as well hang that as a piece of artwork and then I'll survive a shark attack in Bondi Beach. Yeah! <laughs> Whatever lurks in the water, most tourists aren't deterred. In fact, some go to unusual lengths to enjoy their day at Bondi. I'm just, well, I'm scared, a little bit scared for him because it's a bit dangerous, but you know, he really enjoys, so I'm happy to see that he's enjoying something. Stephen is from Dublin. And like surfing, the Irish way. Back home, we don't have much uh, sports shops to support, and so you have to do with what you're given, you know. The, the four legs on the Ireland board helps matters, you know. Kind of steady on yourself, and then when the wave picks you up, you go straight back into the shore. You know, sweet ride. I've only been out like three years, so I suppose I am a natural, yeah. Next on Bondi Rescue. Three kids in desperate trouble. They could have died. Imagine only having two oh, daughters. Yeah, yeah. While Maxie learns the hard way. Hey, one day you'll be in the street. Let's just see how tough you are. Then we'll see how tough you are. Okay. 